Hey guys, Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to have a look at what aperture you should be using for filming landscape shots. So when filming a landscape or establishing shot, it doesn't necessarily follow the same principles as photographing a landscape shot. Well, obviously it needs to be in focus. It doesn't necessarily have to have the same sharpness throughout as found in landscape photography. And foreground interest, a big of landscape photography, isn't necessarily a thing that you would find in many establishing shots or landscape shots when filmmaking. And of course, you wouldn't place the camera vertically. But with that, how do we maximize our aperture settings to get the best settings from filming a landscape shot. Let's take a look. As stated, there are a number of photography factors that do not cross over into the filmmaking aspect of shooting landscapes. And when I reference a landscape shot, I'm typically talking about an establishing shot, maybe a long shot, essentially a shot where the focus point is 30 meters and beyond. With a photograph, the viewer can take as much time as they want to analyze the image. Yet with filmmaking, we are of course timed and we need to direct the audience's attention as to where to look and within a prompt manner. Outside of focus, which we will talk about in a moment, aperture is a tool that can do that. So we know that a wide aperture will produce a shallow depth of field and a narrow aperture will produce a deep depth of field. However, if the focus is set to the background and background only with no foreground elements in between, does it necessarily matter what aperture we use? Well. Perhaps so. All lenses have an infinity focus symbol, which is the focus range for something infinitely far away. Whether shooting at f1.2 or f16, you can still set the focus to infinity and capture subjects hundreds of meters away. The issue with landscapes in particular is that you're never looking at a subject on a flat plane. There are always going to be subjects distant to each other on the z-axis, and shooting with a wide aperture regardless of not having any foreground elements can cause issues with adequate focus. Take these two identical shots, one filmed at f1.4 and the other at f11. On hundreds of meters on the cliffside, the camera is set to infinity focus, and as there are no objects between, the entire image should be in focus, right? Well, as the f1.4 reduces the window of focus where objects are adequately sharp, if we properly analyze the shot, we can see that the outer areas of the image are very soft. And while we may see the image as proportionally flat, distance is still increased throughout. We're not just looking at a landscape location 100 meters away, but in fact, maybe from 75 up to 200. As such, to increase the focus range, we would need to make sure that the aperture is narrower, like f11. Therefore, regardless if the subject is set to infinity focus, a wide aperture may not correctly capture your landscape. Alternatively, you may have heard of a phrase called hyperfocal distance, and it's a focusing phrase which is typically defined by having all elements of the scene in focus. And as mentioned earlier, more of a photography term when capturing foreground elements. If we look at this establishing shot which has been shot at f11, I've employed the hyperfocal distance technique to make sure that all elements are in focus. However, those plants are quite distracting, aren't they? We're trying to establish the castle as the next location and we're too busy looking at the plants. What can we do? Open the aperture to f2. However, like the previous scene, if you open too wide, you're going to have a soft area of focus if the landscape has multiple areas of focus along the z-axis. We can see that the front wall of the castle has also dropped out of focus, leaving only the back wall sharp. Therefore, when filming landscapes that have multiple planes of focus, you want to use a median aperture, something like f5, 6 to 11, to make sure that you correctly capture all of the faraway elements and leave the foreground elements blurred if needed. So even without any foreground elements, it's not always practical to film a landscape shot or a long shot uh, with a wide aperture because finding that focus point can be somewhat tricky. However, is there a circumstance or a location where actually using a shallow depth of field for an establishing shot, a long shot, can actually help guide your audience's attention? Sometimes your landscape establishing shot may not be a hillside or a cliff top and maybe something busy like a forest. And in these situations, using a wide aperture can be useful in bringing the focus to the landscape when it's a crowded image. In this shot, the aperture is set to f11. And although we can assume the focal point may be the center of the image, it's not immediately apparent. In fact, at any point, we could have a foot come over the stone wall in the front area of the image. Therefore, by dropping the aperture to f2, we can now direct the audience's attention up and through the stone wall to the center of the action. 
So where does this put us? Because I haven't really given you a concrete answer, and I guess, well, there isn't one. Overall, you want to avoid using wide apertures such as f095 to f2 when filming landscapes at an angle, or landscapes that have multiple subjects along the z-axis and you wish to retain focus for everything. Use f4 to f11 to retain adequate sharpness throughout a standard landscape shot, and avoid using a narrow aperture in a darkened environment so you don't have to use a higher ISO and gain noise in your image. As a bonus tip, you can always research the specifics of your lens to find out which aperture produces the best sharpness. But again, in narrative filmmaking, especially for those trying to get the film look, too sharp isn't a positive. So I'm sorry to leave you guys with a it somewhat depends answer uh, on your location, circumstance and technical specs with the lighting. But yeah, it somewhat does. Now, one aspect we didn't cover is focal length for landscapes and long shots, because that will drastically alter the interpretation of your image. And that's something that we're gonna cover in an upcoming video. Catch you guys soon.